Now I want to show you a nice way of controlling contrast and colour in the highlights and the shadows. The gradient map can give you loads of control when combined with um, the blending mode soft light. I often get images that have been processed out by photographers so there's very little leeway in the shadows and the highlights, but they very often want more contrast in the midtones. To get contrast in the midtones without darkening the shadows and lightening the highlights is very tricky. So that's where the gradient map is great. So let me show you how. First of all, let's have a look at these swatches. They need to be set to default, so I'm just going to press D. And I'm going to start off with showing you a gradient map that actually takes down the contrast, just in case you have any images that need that. So finding the gradient map here on the drop down. And the first thing I'm going to do is just reverse this so you can see here that not only has it turned itself into a black and white image but if I reverse that you actually get a negative. If we now blended that to soft light it overlays itself in a way that flattens the image. Now that doesn't look very good now but if we didn't quite take it as far as this we could manipulate it a little bit by clicking on this gradient tile and we get the gradient editor there. So let's say instead of going to the extremes, I click on this point here, which is the uh, color point. I'm just going to set that back to its position. And the color that corresponds with that is always found here. So we're going to click on that color. And by the way, we are using now the first gradient here, the foreground to background gradient. Now if I go to my color picker here and I just click around a little bit, I'm just going to click that a little bit further down. You see there that it doesn't become so extreme and I'm going to OK that. I do the same for the shadow. Remember that this is also now reversed so um, I'm going to click on the color there and make that a little bit less extreme. And you can see there that if we OK that we've now taken down the contrast and that's brought a lot of detail into the image. Now of course we can also set the opacity a bit lower so that's another control we've got there. So that's great if you have too much contrast and you need some detail in there. Now I think this image here inherently does suit a lot of contrast. I'm going to turn this one off and create another gradient map. Before I create more contrast with the gradient map, what I'm going to do is just show you something else that I often do, which is the channel mixer. So I'm making a channel mixer adjustment there. Nothing happens until I click the monochrome where it turns itself into a black and white image. I've got the various controls here, of course, but I'm just going to keep it very simple and just blend that now to soft light. And that's going to give a wonderfully contrast image but the shadows are just too dark and there's no detail in there. So I'm going to just turn that off and create a, a gradient map. And we get the same kind of thing really. If I blend that to soft light, we get something very similar to what I got there with the uh, channel mixer. The difference here really is that I can control both the highlights and the shadows at the same time. Whereas in the channel mixer, there would have been a certain amount of controls for either the shadows or the highlights, making it lighter or darker, but here I can really control it. This time I'm not going to click the reverse. I'm just going to click on the tile there. And although I kind of like what it's doing here on the highlight, I'm just going to click on the highlight point there. By the way, the top points here are actually for transparency and we haven't got any transparency here. This is a, a gradient that goes from black to white or foreground to background depending on what colours we've got here on the swatches. And right now we've got black and white. So going to that white, clicking on the colour swatch there, and I'm just going to take that a little bit down so to not make it completely extreme. Okaying that going to click on the shadow endpoint there on the black color there and that's where I'm going to make that a little less extreme. I'm going to just bring that value up there so it's in fact now a darker gray. I'm going to OK that and then my final control here is actually this little um, point there that can be moved in any direction. So you can get an overall lighter image by shifting those highlights further into the shadows or you can do the opposite bring some moodiness into the 
highlights there. What often happens is that you click here and you get another sampler and you can actually create colors in between the colors here. I'm just going to show you. For example, if I bring in a highlight there, I get a sort of flatter skin because it's gone effectively light, slightly darker, slightly lighter again and then darker again. But if I want to get rid of this point, which I actually do, I just drag it off. And to activate and get that point in the middle, you just click on one of your color stops there and that will activate that one. I'm just going to shift it over a little bit towards the middle there. If I shifted that quite far down, we'd get just some pingy highlight standing out. In fact, that's quite interesting. So I'm just going to OK that and see what we got there compared to the original. Turning that off and back on again. Now I've got contrast, not as extreme as before. And I can re-edit that a little bit on the dark point, which is now not black anymore, but it's a dark gray and I'm going to make it an even slightly lighter gray there. Now I think because we've uh, made the shadows a little less uh, dark, we can afford to just make the highlights just a little bit brighter again. So I have this value here at two, about 240 and I'm just going to pull that up a little bit brighter there just to give the image a bit more zing and OK that and we can turn that off and back on again. Now for the moment I'm just going to click on the background and I thought I'd show you how you can split turn an image with the gradient map. I'm going to first just set some colors for these swatches. I'm going to go into um, this color hue bar here and just going to pick myself a pretty random blue, pretty electric as well. Doesn't matter, I'm going to re-edit that afterwards. I'm just going to OK that and take the background, just clicking on that background swatch there and again quite randomly choosing a yellow there. The reason I clicked on the background is that you can see the swatches becoming these colors as opposed to when you're in a mask. So if I click back on the gradient map to there, you don't actually see the colors there. So creating now a gradient map again, you get an overlay of blue in the shadows and an overlay of yellow in the highlights. And I'm again going to use soft light for this. And already we've got a quite interesting look here. In fact, my random colors were not so bad. I probably wouldn't use them at full whack, but I'm just going to click on the gradient editor and see if there's any point to changing them around a bit. I really like this skin tone actually, and I'm not sure completely about the blue. I think maybe it's a little bit too electric. So I'm actually going to click on the blue stop there, the color stop and going to edit that down, perhaps just rounding off that blue to a little bit more cyan. However, that makes it uh, a bit too green you see there in the skin. So I might just go back on that a bit and I'm going to cancel that because I really like what that was doing. And I think we can just edit this a little bit, keeping the warmth of the skin, perhaps letting that go a little bit further and maybe cleaning that up a bit as well. Just clicking on that stop on the color itself and maybe just driving it both a bit lighter and a little bit more neutral. Perhaps also a, a touch more down towards the warmer end of it so we don't get any green cast in the face. And that looks better. It can go even a touch lighter, I think. And there we are. And since we have a lot of contrast here already, I'm just going to OK that and then take that down in opacity so you get a slight split tone. If I turn that off and back on again, you see you get a really nice and interesting uh, color to it as well as the contrast. So the gradient map is a really good way of uh, controlling your contrast in a very different way from what you would do with curves. It's a little bit similar to using a black and white layer or a channel mixer if you're using um, just the black and white. But you've also got that dimension of being able to control the shadows and the highlights and also add a split tone to it. But we think that you will dig this. <laughs>